We come to the third oral question. Um, Baroness Heyman. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper and draw attention to my interests in the register. My Lords, the Net Zero review will cover how the transition to Net Zero will be funded and assess options for where the costs will fall. This involves analysing the range of options for how households, businesses and the taxpayer could contribute to the costs of transition, as well as maximising opportunities for economic growth as we transition to a green economy. We will need to evaluate the trade-offs between cost, competitiveness, effects on consumers and impacts on taxpayers. I'm grateful to the noble Baroness for that reply uh, and her recognition that costs are not the only issue to be taken into account. The COVID crisis demonstrates to us every day the need to assess the effects of individual policies in the round, not simply against a single metric. So does the Minister agree that the magnitude of the threats from unrestrained climate change means that when we assess the cost of measures to meet our net zero target, we need also to take into account the benefits to health, employment and a sustainable economic recovery? And could we not set an example of good practice in overall impact assessment on climate measures as part of our preparations for COP26 next year? The noble lady is absolutely right that uh, we need to look at these issues in the round and the noble lady referred to the uh, impact of the COVID crisis and also our aims for a green recovery and one of the things that the government uh, has put a huge amount of emphasis on is a green recovery because not only will that help us meet our net zero target in the longer term, in the shorter term it's been shown that these kinds of policies bring extra economic benefit in their own right, and that's the exact kind of approach the government is taking. Uh, Baroness Ritchie of Downpatrick. My Lords, what discussions have taken place with the devolved administrations to determine what contribution the different jurisdictions will commit to in order to achieve the overall UK target for climate measures and maybe the noble lady, the Baroness, and the Minister to provide me with an answer in relation to that. There are ongoing discussions with all the devolved administrations on the issue of climate change, and I'm happy to write to the noble lady with further details of those discussions. Baroness Verma. My Lords, I refer my uh, noble lords to my interest in the register, and I would like to first congratulate um, the government for putting um, green, the green economy at the forefront of the work we're doing. But would my noble friend um, to bear in mind that industrial cities like Leicester will need a lot of work to be able to produce the zero, um, the net zero um, targets, um, and especially. Um, take into account that the, we are having ever diminishing green spaces in the city. One of the things that the Net Zero Review is looking at is the role of technology and innovation that might help cities that could struggle to meet the Net Zero target to make further progress towards it. Uh, Lord Curry of uh, Kirkall. Yes, my, my Lord, my interests are as recorded in the register. May I ask the noble Baroness whether the role of agriculture and domestic food production will be taken into account in the review and also the future of the emissions trading scheme? Uh, emissions trading is one um, aspect of us meeting our net zero target, so I think it will be taken into account in the review, uh, as do nature-based solutions to climate change uh, form part of our strategy. Uh, Baroness Blackstone. Um, my Lords, what steps is the government taking to ensure that all homes are insulated to a standard compatible with net zero? Well, the noble lady will be pleased to know that the Green Homes Grant launched uh, yesterday for applications. That's two billion pounds uh, worth of funding towards uh, homeowners and landlords uh, to upgrade the energy efficiency of their homes to help us make progress towards that net zero target. Deverson. My Lord, sir, as the Minister will know, one of the biggest challenges of climate change is to bring our citizens along with us. If we don't do that, we don't achieve this. Could the Minister give us her ideas on how we should accomplish that? How do we bring the citizens along to agree these changes? 
My Lords, uh, bringing people and our citizens along with us will be a big focus for our work on COP26, making sure it's not just governments getting together, but businesses and citizens from the UK and, and across the world. I think the other thing that I would say to the Noble Lord is that part of the point of the review that the original question was about was to have a clear and transparent analysis of the costs and benefits and look at how and where they should fall so that everyone can understand the path towards transition and the contribution that we will all have to make towards it. Uh, Lord Lucas. Uh, my Lords, uh, will the government commit to creating an open shared resource with all the data and conclusions and research and arguments that are generated as part of the net zero review so that we can all go forward and benefit as professionals from a shared resource in uh, creating ideas and opportunities to make progress and in particular reflecting what the noble lord lord teverson said uh, so that we as citizens can share the conclusions that are reached and the effects that they're going to have on us. My Lords, uh, I will take back to the Treasury uh, the desire for the review to be as tra transparent as possible. I think that isn't exactly the intention of the review. Um, to update Noble Lords, we will publish an interim report this autumn, which will set out our approach to the, the review, contain analysis done to date, which will inform the final findings of the review as well. Lord Tunnicliffe. My Lords, <clears throat> quoting from the Net Zero Review in <clears throat> terms of reference, part two objectives to consider how the transition to net zero will be funded and assess options for where the cost will fall. This would involve, and there's four bullet points, the second one, identifying mechanisms to create an equitable balance of contributions. Does the noble lady, the minister, not agree that this must mean that the issues raised by Baroness Heyman's question must be taken into account. Well, my Lords, I can't preempt the findings of the review, but what I can say is that the review will absolutely take into account the opportunities that arise from the transition, including for employment, productivity and economic growth, as well as looking at just where the costs will fall and how they will be paid for. Uh, Baroness Lane Fox of Soho. I draw attention to my interest in the register. To build on Lord Teverson's point about citizen engagement, the UK Climate Assembly, Citizens Climate Assembly has many great recommendations when they recently reported, many around business, which is vital to help reach net zero. Will the government commit, as the Citizens Assembly at 83% also agreed, to make sure that government contracts are given to responsible, low-carbon producing suppliers? My Lords, the Government will look very closely at the recommendations of the Climate Assembly. The Noble Lady is absolutely right that we need to have businesses on board with this agenda. One of our focuses for COP26 is uh, green finance, and one of our aims there is to get as many private sector actors and businesses subscribed up to standards for green finance that can help transform the money going into businesses and how it's allocated, taking into account climate risk in the future. Uh, Baroness Whitaker. My Lord, f f following the noble Lord, Lord, Lord question, what thought has the government given to the need for, for retraining to open up the, the new kinds of jobs which we're in? The government places a huge emphasis on the importance of training as part of our green recovery. The Prime Minister made a series of announcements yesterday on plans to upgrade skills, not just focusing on young people, but focusing on older people who hadn't originally got those skills and enabling them where needed to transition to new jobs in a green economy. A Baroness Scott of Needham Market. Is the Minister confident that the methodology used by the Treasury in the review will sufficiently factor in the costs of not tackling climate change, which Lord Stern's 2006 review estimated would be 5% of GDP by 2050? 
Yes, I'd like to reassure the noble lady that it will, and I'd also like to say to noble lords that the review is not a question of whether we need to act to meet our net zero target. It's about how we can act to meet that target. That target is set, set out in law. We were the first major economy to commit to doing it, and the review is all about how we get there. And so the question of the costs of not getting there, whilst important, is hopefully one that we've also put to bed.